the given second order linear homogeneous differential equation has a solution of y1 equals x. We're asked to determine the general solution on the interval from zero to infinity. We'll be using the method of reduction of order. For a quick review, a linear second order homogeneous differential equation must fit one of the forms shown here below where the second form is obtained by dividing through by big A of x. Since big A, big B, and big C are not constants, we cannot use a characteristic equation. To use the method of reduction of order, we must be given one solution to the differential equation. And the method of reduction of order is a method to reduce a second order differential equation to a linear first order differential equation to help solve the equation. We start by assuming the second solution will be in the form of y2 of x equals some function of x, which we'll call u of x, times y1 of x, which is the given solution. I also want to mention there is a shortcut formula shown below to determine the second solution, y2 of x, which we'll use to solve the same problem in a different video. So going back to the problem, we begin by assuming the second solution is y2 of x equals u of x times y1 of x. I'm going to go ahead and shorten this and write this as y2 equals u times x. The next step is to find y2 prime and y2 double prime and then perform substitution into the differential equation. To find y2 prime, we need to apply the product rule, which is the first function of u times the derivative of x with respect to x, which is one, and then plus the second function of x times the derivative of u with respect to x, which is u prime. Simplifying, we have u plus x u prime. And now we need to find y2 double prime, which is equal to the derivative of u with respect to x, which is u prime, and then plus to find the derivative of x u prime, we need to apply the product rule again, which is the first function x times the derivative of u prime with respect to x, which is u double prime, and then plus the second function of u prime times the derivative of x with respect to x, which is one. Simplifying, we have two u prime plus x u double prime. And now I perform substitution into the given differential equation. For u double prime, we substitute u two double prime, which gives us two u prime plus x u double prime, and then plus x to the power of negative one times y prime is y two prime, which is u plus x u prime, and then minus x to the power of negative two times y, and y is u times x. This is equal to zero, and now we simplify. We have two u prime plus x u double prime. Distributing x to the power of negative one, we have plus x to the power of negative one u, and then plus x to the power of negative one times x times u prime is just u prime. Then we have minus x to the power of negative two times u times x is x to the power of negative one u. Combining like terms, you only have one x u double prime term. We have two u prime terms. Two u prime plus u prime gives us plus three u prime. And then we have x to the negative one u minus x to the negative one u, which gives us zero. The differential equation simplifies to x u double prime plus three u prime equals zero. Now, because there's no u term in the differential equation, we perform a substitution to reduce the order. Let's let w equal u prime, and therefore w prime is equal to u double prime. Performing the substitution, we now have x w prime plus three w equals zero. Now we have a first order linear homogeneous differential equation, which we can solve using separation of variables or an integrating factor. I'm gonna go ahead and use the separation of variables. Once we determine w, we can come back and find u by integrating w because w equals u prime. Let's first write w prime as uw dx, which gives us x times uw dx. Let's also subtract three w on both sides, which gives us equals negative three w. Next, let's multiply both sides by one over x and multiply both sides by one over w, which gives us one over w dw dx equals negative three divided by x. And now we can think of multiplying both sides by dx, which gives us one divided by w dw equals negative three divided by x dx. 
And now we integrate both sides. Because we're solving on the interval from zero to infinity, we can leave off the absolute value. The integral of one divided by w dw is natural log w. Equals on the right, we have negative three natural log x plus a constant, which we'll call c sub one. Before we exponentiate both sides of the equation, we'll apply the power property of logs to negative three natural log x, meaning we can move negative three to the position of the exponent. And now exponentiating both sides with a base of e, on the left, e to the power of natural log w is just w. On the right, we have e to the power of natural log x to the power of negative three times e to the power of c sub one, which is just some constant. Simplifying, we have w equals x to the power of negative three times some constant e to the power of c sub one, which we'll call c sub two, giving us w equals c sub two times x to the power of negative three. Now that we have w, we can determine u because w equals u prime. Let's do this on the next slide. So again, if w is equal to c sub two x to the power of negative three, which is equal to u prime, we can recover u or determine u by integrating c sub two x to the power of negative three with respect to x, which gives us u is equal to c sub two x to the power of negative two divided by negative two plus a constant, which we'll call c sub three. Notice here we have a family of functions. We can use any u to find the second solution, y2. To simplify u, let's let c sub three equal zero and c sub two equal negative two, which gives us a simplified u of u equals x to the power of negative two. So now that we know u, we can determine y2 because y2 is equal to u times x. So now we know y2, a second solution is equal to Again, u times x, which is x to the power of negative two times x, which is x to the power of negative one, or one over x. From here, because y1 and y2 are linearly independent, the general solution to the second order linear homogeneous differential equation is y equals c sub one y1 plus c sub two y2. But in our case, we've already used c sub one through c sub three. So let's give the general solution as y of x equals c sub four times y one, which is x, plus c sub five times y two, which is one divided by x. We'll take a look at this same problem again using the shortcut method for the reduction of order. I hope you found this helpful.